Hello, I'm Hilary Alexander for Real Style magazine, and I'm in southwest London in the atelier of one of the most famous milliners in the world, Philip Tracy. So all the hats, you know, begin as drawings, and then I develop them from a two-dimensional material and turn them into three-dimensional pieces. I make all these things. People think I've got a factory and that, you know, I grandly hand somebody a sketch and say, you know, have that, do that for me. It, you, you can't do that. You can, you're, it's, it's impossible to say to somebody, you know, make that, because when you make something like that, you don't know what you're doing when you begin. You're, mm. you're, you're start, it's like, it's a bit like cooking, really, because, you know, you're getting all, the, all these ingredients and your favourite things and what you want to cook, and, and then you work on it and make it delicious. So it's the same thing with hats, in a way. It's not just... It's supposed to look effortless and it's just hanging out there, but in fact, it's actually torture. You know, all of these kind of... These are kind of old things I sort of, you know, collect on my travels. This is like or your, your larder or your pantry. Yes, it's a bit like, you know, this is, yes, exactly. This is the sort of larder and, you know, I make hats for people who like hats and are going to an ultimate uh, event in their lives. Yeah, or their daughter's lives. Or their life. daughter's lives. And they want to look a million dollars. And I like to um, help them to achieve that. So when you're doing something, say, for a mother of the bride or yep. a young girl going to a wedding, yep. what are the most important factors in making sure that the hat's going to work for the average, say, girl or woman in the street? Well, that it looks good on them that they, and that they like it. If they don't like it, then it looks very kind of awkward. Mm. Whereas uh, you can't really, you know, you can't really sort of make something for somebody that they don't like. Mm. They, you, you have to show them why it might look good on them, because if, when you feel good, you look good. Yeah. If you don't feel good, you look awkward. How many hats would you be able to turn out, say, in a month, in a week here? I never, ever count. I have no idea. But not vast mm. quantities. It's all very handmade yeah. and non-automated. The only automated part is our brains. <laughs> These are very kind of time-consuming, um, expensive hats, and there are lots of less expensive right. hats. But this kind of technique is takes days and days and days. You know, one day it's Harry Potter, one day it's a uh, mom going to their child's wedding, one day it's Armani, one day it's Lady Gaga, one day it's a royal person. Now, speaking of royal persons. Mm -hmm. How did you cope with the fallout from the famous pretzel hat, which well, went viral? <laughs> yes, well, I, the thing is, I love Andy Warhol, yeah. and uh, I viewed it from a Warholian perspective, and uh, it's, it's pop culture. Yeah. Uh, it, it is what it is, yeah. and, uh, and it's the most famous hat in the world, and it earned, <laughs> it earned a charity $130,000, and nobody died. <laughs> <laughs> I developed an idea for an African show, bought African tribal music on the internet, and then when I got it, it sounded a little bit folky, mm. and it wasn't quite what I was expecting, so I love Michael Jackson. I was playing him one evening, or his music, and then the way you make me feel came on, yeah. and I thought that's tribal African. Yeah. And then I have these friends who do celebrity auctions in Los Angeles, and I knew that they worked with Michael Jackson, so I called them up and I said, "Would there be any possibility I could borrow one of Michael Jackson's gloves?" And they said, "Well, actually, we're selling all his clothes, and would you like them?" And I said, "Yes." yes the clothes arrived, and they were like an energy. So we built this room in the basement because we had to get so much insurance in case somebody ran off with it all, which would have been mortifying. Occasionally, when I'd go to the room, there was just like a rail of kind of pop relics. Mm. They were like instantly recognizable. You know, he had his, his makeup on them, his mm. perfume on them, his Billie Jean trousers, where he, where he performed Billie Jean in. You know, some of the girls were crying, and, you know, it's a... He's a fantasy yeah. character, Michael yeah. Jackson. He's not real. So after 25 years, Philip, yes. what's still to be done and what's next? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. Every day brings a new project, a new sort of 
project stroke torture, but I love it. You know, I'm in the fortunate position that I have an opportunity to influence how people see hats in the 21st century, and how lucky am I? Thanks very much, Philip, and thank you for joining us on Real Style.